Today we're talking about the Bamboo Lab H2D and after a week and a half of use I'm going to share with you my first impressions but also I'm going to go over everything that's new and what kind of difference that actually makes in day-to-day -day printing. One quick note, while this H2D was sent to me by Bamboo Lab, it's not sponsored by them. So all of my experience and all of my thoughts on these are myself. Bamboo Lab doesn't get to see this video beforehand. This video does have a sponsor, however, and that's Skillshare, but I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Really big change is the dual extruder. And this one makes a lot of sense if you ever use more than one filament in a print. So the two main options that you have here is either better multicolor printing or even better multi-material printing, which is really interesting. For multicolor printing, the main benefits is less purging and less time wasted with all of that purging. Since you can have one extruder, have one filament all the time, or don't need to change quite as often as you otherwise would, this can save a lot of filament and time. One really nice feature is that Bamboo Studio is now optimized in a way that it can suggest the best filament placement for your setup to get the fastest prints with the least filament wasted. That's super cool and also, you know, it takes that job for you and makes it easier. You can also turn that feature off, but in general, I love how they thought about all of this. So while I'm going to talk more about the new AMS2 Pro later, it's important to know that the AMS can only ever be connected to one extruder head. So it can, for example, be connected to the left one, and then for the right one, you just put one external spool in. So it's not like the one AMS can be used for both print heads at the same time. Overall though, this makes multicolor printing a lot more effective. Obviously, if you only print two colors, you don't really need to change or purge filaments at all which then is really nice. Other than that, the main filament is gonna be loaded into one single head and then the other one is gonna cycle through usually. This can give you great increases and I like that. To me, even more exciting though is the multi-material stuff that you can do with this. Multi-material printing means you're not just printing different colors, but fully different materials. One really great feature, for example, is printing support filaments in another filament than your main filament. Then they come off way easier and way cleaner, which can be amazing for prints. Another use case is maybe printing this window stopper with an inner core of PTG and an outer one of TPU. Before this really wouldn't been possible, except for maybe with AMS TPU. Now you can just have the TPU fed straight into the right extruder and have your PTG in the other one and it's gonna work flawlessly. One thing that I would have loved to see is being able to print with two different nozzle diameters at the same time. So maybe you're using a 0.4 nozzle to adjust to the perimeters and the outsides of the model, and then you're using 0.8 millimeters for the infill to be a lot faster there. Currently, as far as I know, that's not possible or enabled, but maybe we'll get an update in the future that makes that possible. One other thing that I love is that the H2D now has the A-series style nozzles, which are super easy and quick to swap. It's now so much faster to switch nozzles as compared to the X1C series. The next big upgrade for me is the heated chamber. Since lately I've been printing more and more advanced filaments like ASA and PC, this has really come in very nicely. While before these prints were a little bit hit or miss for me and I had a surprisingly high failure rate, I've been printing with the H2D for a while and it's been working flawlessly with these. So I think if you're someone that prints a lot of engineering grade quality, even maybe going up to nylon, which is even harder to print, this can really be a game changer for you. One thing that comes with the heated chamber and also the big build plate is a way higher power draw. When heating up, my smart power meter shows spikes of around 1700 watts, which is a lot. Also, during sustained printing, I saw the H2D pull around 200 to 300 watts on average, where something like my X1C, also with polycarbonate printing, only draws around 100 watts. So there's a quite a big difference. One last thing that I enjoyed is that there's an automatic vent in the H2D. This means when filaments that don't want to be too hot, for example, like PLA are printed, then it can automatically pop up this little vent and then you don't have to open the door manually anymore. This just to me is a lot smarter and more professional way to do this and I really enjoy that it was added. Honestly, so far I'm pretty impressed with the improvements that the Bamboo Lab H2D has gotten. And we always expect companies and their products to get better and better. But rarely we put the same focus on ourselves and developing ourselves. But that's where the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, comes in. I, for example, am always thinking about ways to make these video better and more engaging. And that's why I recently took the social media storytelling class by Rob. Watching it, I learned a lot about storytelling structure and how to use that in my videos. 
And besides that specific class, I like Skillshare because it's the largest online learning community for creatives. That means no matter what creative skill you want to learn, there's a good chance it's on Skillshare and all of that within one membership. From learning how to draw to 3D animation in Blender, there are so many different interesting classes. So if you want to level up your creative game or just start a new creative hobby, then you should check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description down below will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare. So get started today. The next thing I want to talk about in this printer is the sheer size. This thing is huge and it barely fit on my table. If you have this side to side with the X1C, the X1C does really look small. So before you're getting the H2D, definitely make sure that you have enough space to comfortably fit it somewhere. Besides the outer size, there's of course the way bigger print volume inside. And I really appreciate this. Being able to print really big parts all in one really is a game changer for me because having that seam in the middle always doesn't look too great. One thing you have to be aware of is that in the x-axis some space is kind of wasted in my opinion since not the whole print area can be printed on by either the left or the right extruder. So you have to see that not all of it is printable and you're losing a little bit of space here. If you really really need to, there are workarounds to actually print with the same filament in both tool heads over the whole print width. But actually it's a little bit sketchy and I'm not sure. So if this is your main way you want to use this printer, then probably that wouldn't be the greatest idea. Other than that, I have to say I'm really happy with the whole size that this printer offers and with all of the parts I can print within it. As I said before, I also wanted to talk about the AMS2 Pro. I really like that this now has a drying function fully included. This means that you can dry your stuff right in there and you don't need an extra filament dryer. All in all, I love that feature, but it comes with a little bit of caveat. Since you usually have four rolls of filament in there, that means that you can definitely dry four rolls of PLA at the same time, which is really cool. But what happens, for example, if you have kind of a mixed setup? Right now I have both ASA and PLA in there and the ASA dries at a much higher temperature than the PLA. So I'm not sure if I can just let this dry for the ASA or if the PLA will be damaged or deformed in that whole process. So do I have to now take all of them out? That would be a little bit annoying if I always have to take all of them out just to dry the one thing. At that point I would still probably just use a filament dryer that I can use separately but in general, I do enjoy this. One last thing that I wanted to mention is the AI failure detection in this printer. So far, it's honestly been pretty nice for me. I've been printing a bunch of stuff and had a failure here or there. For example, I was printing down polycarbonate and didn't put the glue stick down and at some point the bed adhesion just failed. So then the printer actually really recognized this pretty quickly and stopped printing, which I enjoyed because that means you're not having a ton of spaghetti in your printer. On one or two occasions it was a little oversensitive with black filament call saying that there was a blob, although the printer was still printing well. I then turned down the sensitivity to low to just kind of make it a little bit more chill and so far that's been working really well and I like that we're getting to a point where this technology really works and you know it's gonna save your print but also not overly stop prints although nothing is wrong. As you might have noticed this currently is only the 3D printer version and I don't have the laser or the cutter attachment yet. I'm honestly still super interested in those because I think it will be really great to have all of those functions in one machine combined. So if you're interested in that please subscribe to the channel to see a future video once those things are actually coming out and I can get them in for a review. So where does that leave us in the end? Personally, I think the Bamboo Lab HD is an amazing 3D printer. That being said, with all of its advanced features and the price point that comes with that, I don't think it's the ideal option for everybody. I think this is the right printer for you if you use a lot of advanced materials and that heated chamber really comes in clutch. Or if you're doing a lot of multicolor 3D printing and then the dual nozzle setup can really make a difference. Of course, there's also the huge build volume, which gives you much more freedom in terms of the parts you're printing in one big piece. And besides these headline features, there's also a lot of logical advancements like the now A1 style hotends that are so much easier to switch or the built-in filament dryer in the AMS. 
So if you're new in the market and you have the cash to spend, then I can only recommend this printer because my experience with it has been fantastic. If you have, for example, an X1C and you don't need on any of these new headline features, then that's still a great printer and you don't need to upgrade. But if you want the latest and greatest and you're wondering, is it really that good? Yes, it is. If now you're looking to buy, check out the link in the description down below. I really appreciate you buying through that. And if you're wondering what to watch next, you should check out this video about my favorite 3D printing advanced tools. In that I show really cool tools like this 3D scanner or the mini vacuum and blower thingy that I think is so cool. So check that video out if you're interested and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.